We, we all do make huge assumptions. I, I would assume that here tonight we are uh, generally a, a pretty connected bunch of people. I come from an organization which is uh, forever telling people to email, uh, to go to websites and so on, and um, perhaps forgets that uh, an awful lot of us uh, are still not doing that, uh, either can't or don't want to do that. Um, I don't know when you all first got on. Who, who was online? Who was on the internet uh, here before 2000? So quite, quite a few. Yeah, yeah, fine, excellent. I'm glad to see the panel was. Um, but even in the year 2000, the, the proportion of UK homes online was, was still pretty low. And as we reached the end of the decade, we somehow assume that it's everywhere. Um, most of us find it just about, uh, uh, well, I certainly find it impossible to live without uh, that permanent uh, tap into, uh, into the online world. But um, the latest figures show that 30% of UK homes uh, don't have internet access, and 10 million people have actually never been on the internet in the UK, a huge section of our population. So I think we're trying to answer two questions tonight. Does that matter, frankly? Uh, why should we care uh, that um, 10 million people uh, don't choose to use the internet or can't use the internet? And if it does matter, what are we going to do about it? Um, it certainly does matter to, to the digital utopians. I, I get uh, emails almost every day from far-flung parts of the country um, desperate for better internet access and convinced that we should lay fiber optic cables up every uh, country lane. Um, Rural Britain certainly feels very strongly that it risks being left behind, that there is a digital divide opening up there. But uh, let's be clear, the 10 million people who aren't online do appear to share two characteristics. They're uh, older uh, and they're generally poorer uh, than online Britain. Um, what's more, while we may think they're losing out, a substantial number of them don't actually see it that way. There was an Ofcom survey uh, last year uh, which found that quite a substantial number of them uh, said, we wouldn't have it if you paid us. Uh, they were asked if, uh, if uh, the government uh, put up the money for a computer and a broadband connection, would you have it? And quite a few said, nah, don't fancy it whatsoever. Um, but I think we're, we're pretty clear that there are substantial advantages to being online for, for most people, financially, culturally, um, and in terms of politics. Just today, um, uh, the Conservative Party, for instance, has taken a, a leaked document and put it online um, uh, and invited the public to, to come and comment and help reshape their policy around that area. All the political parties are, are, are rushing as we approach the next general election to show that they are connected and that that's how they want to engage with the public. Uh, but of course, quite a, a substantial section of the public won't be, won't be there. Uh, as was said in the introduction, I, I was in um, uh, East Africa a couple of months ago um, where I found that uh, a very interesting attitude to this, this uh, this whole question of digital exclusion. Uh, I wrote a blog post called Water or the Web, uh, having seen um, a, a great urgency in, in, a, in parts of um, Rwanda and Kenya to get online um, uh, in places where they didn't actually yet have fresh water or, um, or access to electricity. Um, and on that blog post, I got a, a lot of messages saying, well, this is madness. They don't need water. They don't need, uh, uh, they don't need um, the web. They need water and electricity far more urgently. But none of those messages were from people locally. Uh, what people locally said to me was, this is urgent for us. Uh, a Rwandan, um, uh, a young 30-something um, Rwandan said to me, uh, we don't have time um, to wait and to catch up with the rest of the world. Uh, we, we need everything at once. We, yes, we need water. Yes, we need electricity. But if we wait uh, to get the full benefits of the web, we'll fall even further behind uh, the rest of the world. Um, and that may possibly apply to those people um, excluded in the UK too. But uh, enough of me. Let's, uh, let's hear from people who really know about this. Uh, our first speaker 